Hey guys, um, I hope you're all doing really well and having a wonderful day. I hope you're closer to the Lord than ever and he's just pouring out his spirit upon you. Um, so today I wanted to share something very personal with you all. And um, it's a vision that I got from the Lord and also my testimony and my story. So, um, so if you stick with me for a little bit, it might be longer and I might cry, but um, I really feel like the Lord has put this on my heart. I didn't necessarily want to share it because it is so personal, but I think the Lord wants me to share it. And I believe that there are probably many people, but even if it's just one person that has had the same struggles as I have that can um, be encouraged and relate to my story. So I wanted to start out by sharing the vision that I got from the Lord. I believe it was, I know it was during the Feast of Trumpets. I'm trying to remember whether it was September 18th or 19th. Um, whatever it was that Saturday, um, I laid down to go to sleep and immediately when my head hit the pillow, I, this vision began and I was wide awake, but I closed my eyes and it was just like it was happening. Um, so in the vision, I was floating down the river and I knew it was a river, the river of life. And I, as I floated down the river, I was clothed from head to toe in white and with a beautiful bridal veil and this gorgeous white wedding dress. And then I, as I floated down the river, I uh, got to a point where there were some steps. And so I stood up and slowly walked up these steps. And on the shore of the river, Jesus was standing and he was, um, he looked so majestic and kingly and wearing kingly wedding clothes. That's the best way I can describe it. Um, just gorgeous, beautifully dressed. And so he was dressed and ready like for a wedding. And this part, I saw it from the third person. So as I stepped out of the river and walked up to him, he took my hand and I stood beside him and he held my hand. But I was watching as an observer at this point. And I saw the way that he looked at me and the way that he saw me. And he allowed me to see how he sees me. So I was looking and I could tell the way he sees me. And this isn't just true for me, this is true for anybody who is in Christ, who has been made clean by his blood. This is how he sees us. And it's so beautiful and it's something I needed so much. And you'll understand that more when I tell my story. But as he looked at me, he could see everything to the deepest part of my soul. I'm really trying not to cry because this is so... <laughs> so personal to me. <laughs> this is why it's hard to share. He could see to the deepest part of my soul all the way through me like like Superman x-ray vision and beyond and he saw all of me and and everything and yet it was all perfectly perfectly pure and beautiful and there was not a single flaw nothing at all. It was like the purity of a newborn baby or of somebody who had never ever sinned it's not that it's not that I was forgiven and he is like, oh, you know, you mess up a lot and you really, you know, you let me down and you disappoint me a lot, but I love you anyways. It wasn't that. It was him looking at me and seeing absolute perfection. And <laughs> I'm sorry. That is something that means so much to me, very deep to me. Uh, so, oh, earlier that day before I got that vision, I I was reading Song of Songs and I came across the verse, I think it's uh, chapter 4, verse 7, where it says, you are altogether beautiful, my darling, there is no flaw in you. And that verse just <laughs> went straight to my heart and it was just like, wow, like he literally doesn't see, doesn't see the flaws in us because he's chosen to make us completely new and clean. And that's what, you know, being reborn, being born again is. It's it's him completely washing us totally, totally clean. More than we can comple comprehend. Um, so I shared that with a friend and um, close friend of mine, Tina, if you're watching this, hi. Um, and it's just meant a lot to me and I keep thinking about that vision and it encourages me so deeply and it lets me know that 
he sees me as flawless. And even though I'm still human, I still, I still mess up. I still fall short all the time, continually falling short of his glory as we all are. And yet he has chosen to wash us clean and see us as perfect. And as we are filled with his spirit and walk in his ways and follow him, that's what we are. So um, I wanted to tell you guys my story. I hope my phone battery lasts because I've only got a little bit. We'll see how this goes. Um, I wanted to tell you my story. So starting with how I grew up, I grew up in a very conservative Christian family. I was one of seven kids. I was the middle one, <laughs> number four. Um, and uh, my mom read the Bible to us every morning. And um, so I grew up, you know, learning the Bible, knowing the Lord, um, being saturated in that atmosphere. Um, we had a lot of very conservative Christian friends. And so I'm very blessed to have that kind of upbringing. Um, so I, I knew from a young age that I loved the Lord because I knew that he was good. And I loved everything that was like good. Like uh, my favorite movie growing up was uh, Cinderella. And I just, I loved her goodness and her, um, how kind and, and I admired that and I wanted to be like that. And so I always had this idea of loving goodness and wanting to be good. And as I grew up, I just, you know, realized time and time again that I was always falling short of that. And I, I wanted so much to please God with my life and for him to be happy with me and to, in a sense, earn his approval. And so all my life, I would try and try and try and, and just, you know, realize, oh, you know, I mess up. I have an attitude this day or I did this this day or I, you know. And it would just slowly just eat me up inside, all the little things that I knew I was falling short on. And um, my parents were, you know, they were so sweet. And they would say things like, oh, I hope he's such a good little girl. And what an angel girl. And, you know, they, they were glad that I would try to be good. But whenever they'd say things like that, it just made me feel so guilty. Because, like, they saw the outside. They saw how I was trying to be. But they didn't see all the the bad thoughts I'd ever had. They didn't see all the impurities. And so when they'd say, oh, my little good girl, my little angel girl, I would just felt so guilty. Like, I know that I'm not perfect and <laughs> very far from it. And so um, fast forward to I was 17. And I do believe that I was a believer in, uh, before this, but this is was a very big moment in my life. I had a dream. And in it, the Lord said, it, well, in the dream, I died. And then I met the Lord. And he said, I didn't see him, but this just this is a dream. Um, and he told me, I, he said, you, you know, you failed in your life. You have fallen short. Um, but I'm going to give you one more chance to live for 24 hours. That's all. Just for one day, you have to live and be perfect. Don't do a single thing wrong. And so I was like, okay, 24 hours. I've got this, I can do it. So he said, okay, so I'm gonna send you back. You're gonna live for 24 hours and be absolutely perfect. So so in the dream, he set me in charge of this little, this group of little girls and I, like I had responsibilities. And in this 24 hour span, I thought, surely I can be perfect for 24 hours. Like, you know, that shouldn't be that hard. And in it, I just kept, I kept messing up. I kept forgetting my responsibilities. I kept being distracted. I kept thinking bad things and like, and, Sorry, oh, I'm gonna cry. <laughs> it's just, this is a very personal story for me, so I probably will cry a few times. Um, so as I woke up from that dream, I was absolutely sobbing and saying, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it, over and over, and that's what I woke up saying, and I'm just drenched sobbing. Um, and so that was really the, the first time that I was like, Lord, I cannot be good enough. I need you to save me. <laughs> And, you know, I know that he did, and he does. Um, so, oh, sorry. Um, so a few years later, I got married, uh, met and married, loved my life. Um, and about a year into my marriage, I started having some severe anxiety. Um, 
I would lay down at night and it felt like I was being literally like choked. Like it was awful. And um, I felt like I couldn't breathe. Like I was being suffocated. Um, my whole body was like, like numb and shaky at the same time. And I was just absolute panic mode. And I, I kept getting these panic attacks and it would seem to happen when I went to bed, um, but it would be randomly throughout the day. Um, and so one day it was so bad that, or one night it was so bad that I couldn't function. Uh, it was so awful. And so my, my husband was worried about me. He took me to my parents' house and um, I, I couldn't sleep all night, but I recited Psalm 23 over and over and over and over and over in my mind. And that's all I could do. I was so consumed with anxiety. I couldn't even think straight. All I could do was say the Lord, I mean, say Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd and repeat that whole chapter over and over. Um, so this anxiety, it carried on for a little bit and I prayed a lot about it and I was just like, I don't know why, but I, you know, this is horrible. And it was, it was like something I had no control over and it would just suddenly just feel like I was being choked and couldn't breathe. Um, so one day I was at work at, at my office job and just working like normal and I had a massive panic attack and I don't know if there was something that triggered it or not, but I just, I thought there's something wrong with me. I can't breathe. I can't get oxygen. I have to go to the doctor immediately. And so, um, my husband took me to the doctor and you know, I thought he's like, well, you're getting enough oxygen. You're fine. You just, you have, this is anxiety. And so you need to, you know, you could go see a counselor. He wanted to prescribe me some anxiety medicine, um, which I prayed about and didn't feel right about taking um, just because of what it does to your body. Um, but so I did end up seeing a therapist. I saw a Christian counselor. And um, what I began to find out as I met with her, and she helped, helped me find out that the reason for this anxiety was the the root cause of it was um, me always feeling like I'm not good enough and constantly nitpicking at myself and and hating myself for my flaws and just constantly being in that state of beating myself up and always feeling like I was failing and failing and failing and failing no matter how hard I tried and I'm still plagued with that but you know learning the cause of that I was like okay it really helped me a lot to learn to be free because I I know who I am in Christ and I can start to declare those things and not have to live in that oppression of constantly not feeling good enough and I know that the Lord does not want us to feel that way and he knows that we're not perfect and that is why Jesus had to die for us and we cling to him and we are filled with his spirit and we are set free <laughs> and we know we are not in bondage any longer so um it was a journey to get there and i still i still battle that not feeling good enough and having to to deal with that but that vision that the lord gave me about him seeing me all the way through to the very depths of who i am and seeing absolute perfection like that was so amazing um another thing that his verse that has meant so much to me in my life was um, in the Beatitudes when Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they, will, sorry, <laughs> for they shall be filled. And that's something that has always made me cry. I can't recite that verse without crying because the Lord knows what's in the depths of my soul. And he knows that more than anything, I hunger and thirst for this righteousness and for the goodness that he is and his his nature and I want to be that way and he said that we would be filled if we hunger for it and yes we continue to fall short in this life in these bodies of sin and death but through his grace and through his mercy and through what he has done for us he has set us free and he sees us not as we are right in this moment but he sees us as we are eternally and so he looks at me and he knows he chooses to see me as perfect, even though, in, you know, right now in this moment, no, I'm not perfect. But he has chosen to die for us and to be able to give us his nature as we are full of his spirit. So 
I wanted to share that story with you guys. And, um, you know, if there's anybody else that struggles with not feeling good enough and hating themselves, beating themselves up, like, um, number one, you have to learn to forgive yourself no matter what you've done because forgiveness is very, very, very important to the Lord. And if He has forgiven someone, including yourself, then we are not to hold anything against anyone, including ourselves. So forgive yourself and know that Jesus looks at you and sees somebody that does not disappoint Him, somebody that is absolutely perfect in every way because He has chosen to make you that way. Not because of anything you've ever done, but because of what He's done. So, yeah, I just want to share that. And we can be free and we can live in the Spirit. And um, the Bible says, you know, if we are living in the Spirit, then we don't gratify the desires of the flesh. So, we don't have to be worried about every single little detail because you know, that can just consume us and we can just be so worried about all the details of the do's and don'ts and what I should have done, shouldn't have done. Like it can, it can literally choke us and just suffocate us. And it, it did that to me. I'm speaking from experience. Um, but instead we walk in freedom and we follow the Lord as his servants in every single way. And as we are full of the spirit and as we focus our eyes continually on him and always bringing our thoughts and our minds back to Christ and what he has done for us and the goodness of God and continue to fill our hearts with worship. Like we automatically do the things that he wants us to do. And um, we don't have to beat ourselves up or hate ourselves for falling short. We just are filled with his spirit and we love him. And he is the one that does the transforming work in our hearts. Like we cannot do that of ourselves. So I hope this has been encouraging to you guys. Um, it meant a lot to me having that vision. And um, this is very deep and personal thing for me, so it's hard to share. But I really hope that it, it means something to you guys and can encourage even just one person. So I love you guys.